The ancient Rosicrucians taught that the eternal feminine was not extracted from the nature of man, as Moses would have us think, but was rather made subservient to the opposite side of its own nature. They believed, you see, that every creature was essentially male and female. But for reasons which we will discuss later, only one phase of that nature manifested at a time. By fire, these philosophers taught that there was but one life force in the human body, and that man used it in the furtherance of all his labors, that he digested his food with essentially the same energy with which he thought and reproduced his species with the same forces which he used in physical exercise. This force, personified, was said to be the builder of the universal temple. It became the Hiram Abith of masonry, the builder of the eternal temple. In Egypt, this force is symbolized by a serpent, and it is worthy of note that in ancient Hebrew, the words serpent and savior are synonymous. And that should be a great revelation to many of you out there. Now remember, I'm not asking that you believe any of this. I am merely revealing the esoteric meaning behind the stories that you have heard and read about in your education, in college, in your private life, in the movies, all your life. And yes, even in your churches. In ancient Hebrew, serpent and Savior are synonymous. In the stanzas of Daizen, an ancient Tibetan fragment, it is stated that at one time a shower of serpents fell upon the earth. Now this is understood esoterically to represent the coming of the great world teachers who have long been called serpents or the gift to man of intellect by Lucifer through his agent, Satan. You see, for at the basis of all of these esoteric mystery religions is the Luciferian philosophy. The deity Hermes was the son of Zeus and Maya, one of the daughters of Atlas. He was originally a deity of agriculture and fertility. But in the course of the rise and sophistication of Greek culture, he was raised to the station of the messenger of the gods. As such, he is generally depicted with wings on his heels, a winged helmet, and carrying a caduceus, which has since been a associated with the medical profession. Hermes was one of the more benevolent deities and was often associated with the principle of knowledge. Also, the communication of messages from the heavenly worlds to the abodes of mortals. When the Romans dominated the area, they knew Hermes as Mercury a god of swiftness, of messages, and to a sense of the ability to read the human mind. In the meantime, the Ptolemaic dynasty in Alexandria in North Africa began to associate the concept of Hermes and Mercury with the deity of the Egyptians, Thoth, the god of writing who was called also the scribe of the heavenly assembly of the Osirian rites. So we now have a deity that by the beginning of the Christian era was known under three names and who was to become a tremendously important psychological force in the origin and, de and descent of what we term today as mysticism. The names were brought together in a curious way to create in Alexandria a hypothetical person who was known to these people as Thoth Hermes Trismegistus. 
Trismegistus meaning the three times great. No one seems to be quite sure when Hermes lived. They cannot give us any evidence as to whether he is simply a composite of earlier beliefs or whether there actually was a person by that name or that some sage took that name. One thing is certain, however, he became the personification of the wisdom of the world. He was believed to be the true author of all the books that were ever written, because actually all of these books depend upon a dimension of wisdom, a power of knowledge, man's capacity to think, to learn, to know, and to transmit. He also became, in particular, the guardian of what was called the Hermetic Arts. And the Hermetic Arts have descended to us as chemistry, astronomy, music, geography, and medicine. Now this in itself is very interesting, especially when we find that this mysterious being, whoever he was, has, had also left a series of books or writings especially attributed to himself. This was the Hermetic literature. And the most important of the Hermetic books was The Shepherd of Man, a mysterious dialogue between Hermes and universal mind. Where it came from and how it was compiled is one of the unsolved mysteries of history. But one thing is rather evident. It first came into prominence, first came to be known, and first came to be venerated in Alexandria, about the beginning of the Christian era. This mysterious book, The Shepherd of Men, brings in another dimension, because in many of the old representations of Hermes, he is shown carrying a lamb on his shoulder and also carrying a shepherd's crook, thus tying him to the concept of the good shepherd and the shepherd of men. This mysterious being came to have a very profound influence upon the development of knowledge. He was one of several composite beings or persons developed among the Alexandrian Gnosis and the Neoplatonists to personify forms of learning and attitudes toward truth, the search for realities. Our knowledge today on hermetic hermeticism is largely centered in alchemy and also, of course, in the works of the Rosicrucians and the Kabbalists. All of these groups consider Hermes as their patron saint. The G in the center of the compass and square of the Masonic emblem does not stand for God or geometry. It means gnosis, knowledge, those who know. Thoth Hermes is accredited with being the first to reveal the art of writing to the present human race. According to the records available, he lived in Egypt as a contemporary of Moses. Some authorities even claim that Moses and Hermes were one and the same person. The Greek name Hermes is taken from an ancient root, herm, which means the active or positive, radiant principle of nature sometimes translated as vitality or generative force, and known to ancient Freemasonry, or the Sons of Light, the Freemasons, as the cosmic fire. Hiram, and later as Hiram Abiff. Hermes Trismegistus, often called Mercurius Ter Maximus, dominated the philosophical and literary thought of the ancient world. His very name, ladies and gentlemen, became a synonym of wisdom. In fact, he was revered 
as the personification of philosophy and erudition. He was regarded as the first Kabbalist, the first physician, the first alchemist, and the first historian. The actual life of this demagogue and king of the ancient double empire of the Nile is obscured by that twilight which hides the origin of all peoples and those who think they know, you can be assured, do not.